Hi, I'm Rama Karan Sethi. Uh, I'm a director here at Intel, uh, responsible for AI products in the enterprise and uh, cloud division. And with me, I have here. Hi, my name is Arun. I am part of the open ecosystem team at Intel. And we are very happy that you chose our session to be part of this. So you probably heard the announcement this morning when we talked about the open platform for enterprise AI. And this talk is going to be giving you more details about how we are thinking about it and what is it that we're trying to do over here. So if you think about with you know, ChatGPT coming about a year and a half ago, you know, a lot of the enterprises are looking at Gen AI to solve their productivity problems. They want to understand, they want to evolve it rapidly. They get that part you know, in lots of different ways, independent of what industry you are part of but they want to adapt the Gen AI patterns, but they are struggling to realize, how do you put this into production? You know, if I'm building a Gen AI solution, what are the core components of a Gen AI solution? If I'm building a rack pipeline, what would the core component look like? Can I swap those components? Should they be open? Should they be closed? You know, how would I scale this? How would I validate this kind of a solution? Those are all the common questions. And as Intel is a IT company, those questions are coming to our mind. Our own customers as well are asking these questions. So that's sort of the premise that we are looking to solve over here. And let's hear it from Gartner. Gartner released this survey which talks about what are some of the barriers for, open, uh, for the adoption of enterprise AI. You know, as you are building these Gen AI solutions, they called out some of the reasons that are relevant to make Gen AI adoption go faster. And if I were to highlight some of the primary reasons, ease of development and deployment is one of the primary reasons here, essentially. So what he's talking about is, how can I start, you know, we have heard about AI for a long time, but what is this Gen AI? What do, how do I develop on my local machine? And then how do I scale it? I'm running on a cloud, I'm running in a data center, I'm running on an edge. How do I scale my application? How do I go grow big over there? How do I measure my return on investment? As I've done you know, investment on these Gen AI projects happening here and there, is a 2x productivity good? Is it 4x productivity good? How am I saving cost on it? Am I increasing efficiency? Am I improving performance? What are the core components around the ROI part of it? Security is a big part of it. I don't wanna be using my corporate data to feed back into the model. I mean, there were a lot of cases that were filed against essentially in you know, open AI because when you are feeding data into it, it takes that data and feeds back into the model. And that's what makes the you know, open AI essentially intelligent. But now you don't want you know, your SSN if you feed it in there and that to show up in somebody else's search. So that's an important element. And SSN is an extreme example, but simple corporate data. You don't want that to start showing up. And then last but not the least is end-to-end -end use case support is super important here. So last week, um, and again this morning, we announced open platform for enterprise AI. It's All right. Yeah, like, so like Rick Arun mentioned, so there's been conversation about return on investment, there's been conversation about fragmentation, there's been conversation about complexity. Okay, so, and Arun also flashed very quickly the, the Gartner data showing us the top market barriers for adoption for enterprise AI. With that in mind, we as Intel, uh, we are here to try and see what can we do to help solve this problem. Okay, so we are not introducing a new technology, we are not introducing a new feature, or we're not introducing something that's not already out there. All we're trying to do is bring together all the components and the ecosystem players into one place so that we can work together to creating generative AI solutions, end-to-end -end solutions much faster and reduce your time to market in, in generating your complete end-to-end -end solution. And in this process, yeah, like, like Arun mentioned, Pat made, uh, Pat made an announcement uh, at Intel Vision saying, hey, we have what we call as open platform for enterprise AI. Okay? And then we do have a bunch of uh, partners that are uh, coming on board with us and then Within here, what is OpenAI basically is, it is an open platform that enables configurable, composable components from the ecosystem players, and then we are able to help build end customer solutions from these multi-partner components. 
and we are creating these in such a way, or we are enabling these in such a way that they are cloud native, so that they can be deployed for enterprise. Okay. So that said, let's go a little deeper into what is it that we're trying to do uh, with the platform here. All right. So, so we, so, so, so to to go to go a little deeper into the Gartner barriers and what Arun was mentioning here, right? So let's look at the ecosystem complexity. Okay, when you are trying to build an end-to-end -end solution for uh, for an enterprise AI, a generative AI solution, right? LLM plus RAG, you need to go through uh, you need to go through at least these three primary stages. Okay, so the first stage where you have to go in and figure out what is it that you can do with the data, and how can you prune the data? How can you make it usable for the model? How can you make it more efficient for the model? Okay, and in that sense, you have players that are coming in and uh, developing multiple vector databases. There are players in the storage systems or the storage areas that are coming in. There are application ISVs that are coming in that are helping in there, right? So anywhere from Redis, Pinecone to Databricks, Snowflake, right? So all those guys kind of fit in that preparation for the data or AI pipeline preparation data piece of the, the puzzle. And then once you have the data, once you're in the development or uh, once you're in the development mode of the solution, you need to start building these LLMs now. So you use this data. You either use an open source model or you try to fine tune a model from the open source and you try to create your own version of the open source model. Okay. Now once you have the model, once you have the data, so you also have places where you might want to use multiple models. Okay, so, so the model aggregators come into place. People like Hugging Face, Mistrels of the world, right? So, so once you have these and you have the development of the solution, or the developed model and the, and the pipe, pipeline ready, now you, need to, you have your solution for inference. You need to deploy it. Now you have a different set of ecosystem players coming into play. So system integrators are value-added resellers, uh, come into play that have to integrate all of these pieces together to make the complete end-to-end -end solution work. Now, once you have the software stack ready, right, these need to be working on top of an existing ODM system or a new ODM system. And you also need infrastructure uh, software on top of the ODM systems that works with all of these other software components and the stacks you built to, to make it a complete end-to-end -end solution. So imagine uh, an end customer or an enterprise customer who has probably some knowledge of AI, and imagine some, some enterprise customers who have no knowledge of AI trying to come and build these LLM and RAG solutions from complete end-to-end, -end, right? So it's, it, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of ecosystem players, and a lot of different things that can go wrong. So as open platform for enterprise AI, what we are trying to do is, we're trying to make that easy. We're trying to bring all these partners together, all their contributions together, all the pieces together and make sure it's kind of pre-validated to a certain extent. So that is what we mean when I say, we are going to provide a specification for OpenAI. So if a vector database company needs to come and work with us, right, we'll tell them, hey, can you make this in such a way so that your APIs can work with all these other components? Or can you make this in such a way that you have pieces that are pluggable into all this, the rest of the ecosystem, right? We do that with the specification. And then with the components too, we're going to kind of define and, and make sure these work together with each other. And we are also creating some reference flows. We do have some already available. I'm just going to talk a bit about it in the end. So we have some reference flows already available. You can use them, start with them, build your own solutions. And we have, we're going to build evaluation and benchmarks. And eventually we're going to create microservices for each part or for each stage of this uh, AI pipeline build so that it makes it easy for enterprise customers to come in and build your complete end-to-end -end solution. Okay. So that said, let's take a little deeper dive into what an LLM plus RAG solution entails today. So this is a typical uh, architecture diagram of an LLM plus RAG for, for creating any generative AI solution out there. Uh, this is not new. Uh, all, all that I'm showing here is kind of three typical paths. One path where you just have your open source model, you're not going to touch anything, you're going to just use it, and then use it for your inference. So that path here is being showcased with the green arrows. So you have your user query coming in, and then you have an existing embedding, 
and then there's probably a retrieval or a rancor already, and then it goes into prompt processing. You get your inference engine working with your open source model, and that inference engine might add a guardrail to it, I mean, just to make sure it's not hallucinating, and then you have a path to post-process and then output there. That's a typical LLM path. Now, let's say I want to have my private data, like Arun mentioned, right? So I, I need to include a rack path to it. Right? So now you have your enterprise data that is your own, uh, that is private, and that cannot be shared with others, or that cannot go and modify models and help pretty much everyone out there keep your secret sauce to yourself, right? That's the rack pipeline that I'm showcasing in, in those wild, wild clients there, right? So you have your input data going in, and then there are tools that help you with ingestion and data processing, and then that feeds into the new embedding model. You create new embeddings out of it, and those embeddings are stored in your local index or your local vector database. And now, from that local vector database, when you have your LLM running with RAG, your pipeline goes through the same exact steps, except now you're picking up information from your local database to make sure your answers, whether it's a chat GPT or a summarization question or your policy question or something else, right? Make sure that it picks up information locally and it does get relevant information and feeds into the pipe. So these are two typical paths for LLM and RAG. Now there's also a third path, right? So now some, some folks might come in and say, I like what it's doing, but I don't like the accuracy. I need more out of it. Okay, I have more data. I have like 30 years worth of data. Let's say you're a G or a Raytheon and you're saying, I know what my engines do for 30 years. I need to actually make it even better. I need to get my accuracy higher, right? That's when you go through the fine tuning path. Okay, you, you go in and you take your open source model, you use fine tuning, and then you create your own version of the open source model now. But with fine tuning, this model now has information with your data in it. So, and it also adds a lot more timeline compared to a, a RAG pipeline, okay? So, so instead of going in and being able to just run your LLM on the fly during deployment, your, your, your fine tuning will probably take an additional four to six weeks of effort and four to six, and, and additional hardware and additional software sets that need to go through this pipeline here. And, and with fine tuning, it's, it's a similar step again. Once again, once you have your fine tuned model, you could either go through a typical LLM path or you could go through an LLM plus RAG path. And so, so imagine doing all of this as an enterprise customer. Okay, so this is just one slide showcasing all four paths for different needs, different use cases, different kinds of customers, different kinds of segments and markets. So, so how do we bring all of this together? How do we make sure it's, it's easy for anyone out there to be able to use one of these four paths and build your complete end-to-end -end solution? So that is what we're trying to solve with Open Platform for Enterprise AI. What we're doing is, don't worry about how many components are in there. Don't worry about how many partners or licenses you have to go through. Once you become a member of Open Platform, we will make sure your component is going to work with everything else, and we will make sure we give some amount of reference flows to it. We will guide you through the process. We will help you build some of these end-to-end -end architectures to, to custom to, to, to come up with the outcomes that are relevant to you guys. So that is exactly what we're trying to do. So for, with each and every one of these components, you have different players out there in the ecosystem that, are, that have their strengths and, and, and there are areas where they don't know what this is. So, so folks like Purple Lama know what guardrails are. Okay? So they know exactly what needs to be done to make sure there's no hallucinations. Similarly, folks like, like we just had a talk, Val, Valky, I think, was talking before us. So they know what to do with, uh, let's say, uh, the embeddings, or they know what to do with vector search or semantic search. Okay, so now, how do we bring all these different pieces together and still make sure this is completely working end-to-end -end and have the accuracy you need for it? And that is exactly what we're trying to solve with Open Platform for uh, Enterprise AI. So that said, we, so, so the, uh, here is a little, uh, value chat we put together and said, okay, what do we want to do? Okay, what are we trying to do? We want to make sure the solutions are scalable. We want to make sure they're easy to build. We want to make sure they are accurate and efficient. We want to make sure they're open for everyone. And that is why we, we brought in the collaboration and then we are trying to bring cross industry contribution through the Linux Foundation here. Okay, so that said, I'll have Arun talk talk to us a bit more about uh, the, the partners we have and what is it that we're trying to do next. 
I go back? No, yeah, yeah. How do I go back? Oh, no, go back. Snap. Right. Oh, here. Let's click on this guy. So let's highlight the value. <clears throat> if you look at the ecosystem complexity, you know, F, as you're trying to gain adoption of Gen AI solutions in your enterprise, there is so much to happen in terms of a data ingestion, preparing your LLM, getting the ROI, and when you look at the actual implementation of the RAG pipeline, you can see there are so many components, and for each component, there are open choices, there are closed choices, mind-blowing number of choices, but when you wanna put into production, Hey, but over the last 10 years, you told me cloud native is a thing to do. I'm deploying all over there. So how do I take all of this and adapt this into my cloud native environment? So those are the questions that enterprises are struggling with. So I just want to highlight once again, the idea here is, yes, we may create new components, but the primary premise right now is to bring the components that are already existing, see how we can compose them together, deploy them in a cloud native environment, possibly as a deployment solution because enterprises are heavily invested into it, and then grow from there. Learn from the lessons, you know. Take those reference flows that are created. Make sure we can give you validated end-to-end -end stacks that, hey, here is a hardware, here is a software combination that we have tested on, here is a performance benchmark that works for us. So think in terms of one phase is the construction of the Gen AI pipeline, and second is the evaluation of the Gen AI pipeline so that you can understand where it's gonna be relevant and how it's gonna be relevant for you. These are some of the partners that we have been working with. And if you realize here, you know, all of these partners are operating in that ecosystem complexity part of, of it as we think about it. You know, there are, of course, Intel is about hardware platform. That's primary purpose for us. But then when you look at vendors like Zillis, Zillis is a company behind the Milvus database, for example. So Milvus is a vector database. You know, that's, that's important over there. Red Hat, you know, again, they bring the expertise from their open source experience and not just open source experience, but operating system at that level or OpenShift deployment platform. So potentially some reference flows coming around that. So on and so forth. Hugging Face has become sort of the default hub where all these open source models are being pushed out. So how do we partner with that? So, we are looking at you know, all of these existing partners. What value do they bring? What customer use cases do they bring? And how we can collectively, that's the power of open source, right? We learn from each other, we stand on the shoulder of giants. So how do we bring that collective power, collective wisdom from all of these customer use cases and partners to create sort of something big that we can offer to the rest of the world? And again, we just started it, but again, these partners are super excited to partner and work with us. In terms of a tentative roadmap, and I'm gonna get into the governance of the project a little bit, but here is what we are tentatively looking at. The project got announced this morning, formally launched this morning. Uh, there is a GitHub repo, there is a website, uh, there is a governance model, all of that has been announced. We are looking to create a technical steering committee. This is where we are seeking your input, that who the members of the technical steering committee should be. And that technical steering committee, like any open source project, would define sort of the future direction of the project. We have a proposal in mind, but we really believe in that diversity of views and opinions and customer use cases. So that technical steering committee will essentially define the direction of the project, the roadmap, and you know what it needs to look like. So those are the kind of things that we are thinking about it. I need to get my glasses here. <laughs> um, what are the functional components? What are the frameworks are gonna look like? What that uh, reference flows are gonna look like? So that's sort of what the element is looking like. And then above and beyond, the first element that we are targeting is really the RAG pipeline because that's sort of of immediate concerns to a lot of customers. So how do we create a RAG pipeline in a standard way where the modules are pluggable, you can re re replace them, and yet be able to see the performance effect on your customer use cases? And then as I said, Construction and evaluation. Those are the two phases. You construct the pipeline, get your business objective met, and then you realize, oh, you know what? This vector database is not really giving me that performance. Let me replace it with another vector database and then rerun those benchmarks and see if it gives me that right feel and then see what works for you, really. So we have a GitHub uh, project. You know, 
the organization is OPIA-Project, OPIA being Open Platform for Enterprise AI. So um, we have an OPIA project, that's a GitHub org. On that GitHub org, this is a couple of days old uh, snapshot, but you can see there are Gen AI examples. These are the reference flows that we are talking about. Essentially, you can take them and deploy them into your own environment. And then we have added a docs directory. We have added a governance structure over there in terms of how the technical steering committee is going to compose of. Um, we have put a technical charter, again, all draft charter, subject to the approval of the technical steering committee, essentially. Um, here is the OPR project governance, the way we are thinking about it. As I said, the technical steering committee is going to be composed of you know, people from Intel and from the rest of the partners. That's sort of how we are thinking of composing it. They're going to be really defining what the roadmap looks like, what the charter looks like. Again, it's a draft version in a very classical open source manner. Once the draft version gets out there, you know, it's open for everybody. You know, PRs are more than welcome. And we're going to learn on the fly in transparently in an open source manner. Um, we're going to have a contribution ladder in a very classical open source manner. You know, you become a contributor, you end up being a maintainer, you end up becoming a technical steering committee member based upon your interest, time, and availability. And um, we're going to be using Apache 2 as the license for the project. I'm going to talk through the next steps. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So talking through the next steps here, right? So, so yeah, we, we do have a reference flow or a GitHub with the reference flows. Uh, we do have uh, the, the project live. So as uh, what we're trying to do here is, OK, like Arun said, there's going to be a technical steering committee. We're going to have a kickoff for it and then make sure contributors or, uh, or people who are trying to just be uh, users, depending on where you are, how you fit, what part of the ecosystem you come from, uh, we'll be figuring out who does what, and there'll be more roles and responsibilities that will be defined during that kickoff there. And then uh, sometime next month, yeah, May 14th and 15th, uh, we plan to have an open, uh, open platform for Enterprise A Community Day uh, they yeah, mostly going to be in Portland, yeah. right? Yeah, it's confirmed, I guess. Yeah, and uh, during that day, we would like to invite our partners in. We'd like to have uh, feedback. We'd like to have any changes we might need to make. We might, we, we, we'll see how this can work together, uh, how we can make this better, and how we can make it easy for the end customers to build their solutions, or how we can make for uh, our ecosystems, uh, ecosystem partners to come and make the make it work worth their while to increase their share of wallet to go to the end customers. So that, that's what that community day is all about. And then the, the, the last, I said, like I said, we're going to refine uh, and then expand project plans. Okay, so right now we have certain reference flows we have in there. Uh, most of those uh, that we have in there are, are related to uh, so chat Q&A, summarization, doc summarization, uh, and uh, a few of them that are video-based uh, generative AI solutions. Okay. What if we need to create complex solutions with multi-stage AI? Okay. The first stage being Gen, gen AI or generative AI, and the second stage being CV-based or the, the second stage being, let's say, GNN-based. Okay. So integrating your generative AI capabilities with... Uh, with existing machine learning or deep learning capabilities that are already in, in, in the platforms or in uh, existing solutions. So that could probably be one of those that we'll refine and expand into. So with, with that said, we have a few uh, QR codes and scans. Yeah, you can go to uh, OPR project. These are three QR codes. The first one is about the OPR project on GitHub. Uh, basically, github.com slash OPR dash project. Um, uh, there is an Intel vision, uh, the keynote that Pat Gelsinger gave last week. You can definitely look at the announcement over there, and that's the QR code. Directly takes you to the video over there. And um, opr.dev is our website where we have all the details, sort of the central point where you can visit and tee off to different links um, that are relevant. And I think that's about time. Time for us. And yeah. we can open it up for Q&A. We can keep on that slide. All right. Any questions? I 
Uh huh. Good question. Good question there. So, so uh, let's take a typical example, right? Let's take an example where in the past you were using CV or deep learning model, right? Image based. Okay. So uh, I'm going to just uh, give an example as to uh, one thing that came to us uh, recently. Okay. So let's say you're an auto insurance company. You have what you call as an uh, insurance adjuster. Okay. What does he do? He there's an incident. There's party one. There's party two. There's a collision. In, in, uh, there's a collision involved. There's images from party one. There's images from party two. There's notes from party one. There's notes from party two. In the past, an adjuster would have probably looked at your app in the last five to ten years, right? If it's thirty years ago, a person would actually literally come to your house and look at it, right? But the last five to ten years, there's an app for it. You click a photo. You send the pictures. Uh, the adjuster now looks at the pictures and he says, ah, this is behind this and this is at a red light, so I know the guy behind probably just bumped, in, bumped into the, the guy ahead because there's, there's no potential way of, theoretically, most people won't just move backwards, right? So the adjuster makes a claim and says, party one is at fault. And he says, okay, money goes from here to here. Now with generative AI, right? So what if you can have an insurance adjuster that runs on AI. Now, all these images, all these notes from party one, party two, maybe if there's a traffic ticket involved, right? The ticket information from a car, all of this is just fed in into, uh, in, into an insurance agency's Chen AI application. And the insurance agency also has some local information. How, how, how bad is this intersection in terms of accidents? How bad is the weather? That's local information. He'll not be disclosing that to anyone else. So that's where the rack pipeline comes into play. Okay? And then, now you have your adjuster sending in all this information and saying, hey, who is at fault with this scenario? Here is my dump of images. Here is my dump of notes. Here is my dump of uh, uh, information, let's say, from traffic tickets. Right? Now, all of this needs to feed in, and that rack pipeline we were talking about right, will integrate all of that multimodal input find the information, also pick up information on that local, tra local incident reports and local weather reports, integrates that as part of that. And there might be other uh, secret source information the insurance guys have in terms of older claims or in terms of fraud, fraudulent claims, right? So they'll be integrating all that information and then sending it through the embeddings and now the pipeline will queue out your information on, let's say, an open source model that reads all of this information that was potentially previously CV based, and now this became a Gen AI integrated with a CV based application that gives you the output. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Josh. Should it be OPE AI? <laughs> <laughs> Acronyms or naming is one of the hardest things in open source. Let's take that up with Linux Foundation. Yeah. Well, no, naming is one of the hardest. Naming and caching are the two hardest problems. You can never make everyone happy. <laughs> there you go. Off by one error. There you go. We can never make everyone happy with that. No. <laughs> Young, you had a question. Uh huh. Okay. So what I wanted to ask about is like how do you look at handling uh, either instant collection or perhaps even just the quick end uh, signature for interface with uh, different uh, tools? I don't think we have gone that far ahead to see. Uh, we haven't come to that problem yet. But yeah, during our discussion after this, maybe that's what we need to put into our refine and expand. Yeah, we, have, well, we haven't come to that point yet. Yeah, but, and yeah. then the way we are looking at it is, you know, as these different vector database companies, they come as part of it. Those are the exact problems we want to identify, you know, in terms of what are the challenges from the customer perspective. Empty collection, existing collection, because, and if you look at it, 
There are dedicated vector database companies, and then you look at the existing database companies, they're the all adding vector database capabilities. So is there a right one size fits all model? No, it's not. Like, is empty collection the right model for everybody? No, it's not. So I think it's like what serves your business needs, what solves your customer problem, and what gives you the efficiency part of it is gonna be critical. And like Karun said, eventually you never know, you might actually have to use two different vector databases because of the strengths and weaknesses of each other in the same pipeline. There could be jurisdiction issues, you know, exactly. for example, depending upon where you're running. So the whole idea here is to bring all the players together so that we can identify exactly those kind of challenges and provide recommendations. Like, let this not be a one customer problem or a one solution problem. How do we create those reference flows where we say, hey, we believe if you're going in this direction, this is the right reference flow. Here are the recommended guidelines for that. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, as you and I were talking earlier today, we would love to work with CNCF kind of identifying as we are to deploy this on a cloud native environment, what does that look like? You know, and if we go back, um, let me go back a slide. Yeah, this one. No, no, well, not this one. One more. If we look at this as a typical RAG pipeline, and if you think about each of these as a component, as each of these components are to be deployed as microservices on cloud native, is it okay to just package them in a container? Or are there better resource allocation that we can do? Because there is better uh, compute, better different memory, and it's basically an extension of the DRA essentially that was just introduced in CNCF, and how we can make it more efficient. That's the reference flow that we are talking about. So. I, we would definitely be working closely, you know, as you know and I know, we are both deeply involved with CNCF. So that's definitely a reference flow in our mind. And we believe leveraging this on containerization is gonna be a big win because that's sort of how a lot of the customers have been deploying this anyway. Yeah, well, I think if you think about it, we, we let's take a year out. Our belief is OPR will emerge as the de facto platform how customers will be deploying Gen AI solutions. It's an open platform project, not restricted to open source projects only. You know, end of the day, the closed source platform, whether it's a Pinecone database or whether it's an Anthropic or a Cohere or a Cloud or whatever it is, they want their models to be deployed more frequently. You know, with open source, the value proposition is, you know, you can test it and try it in your local environment. But with these, they also want to get this customer adoption. So the understanding is, if one year out, for example, this becomes sort of the de facto way how customers are deploying it, they would like to be connected over here. They would like to make sure that their customer use cases are represented in OPIA so that then they can recommend to their customers, hey, this works. You know, and I think that's the value and that's the pull-in for these closed source vendors is gonna be. Yeah, keep, keep the share of wallet there, right? And then still be part of the open platform okay, so that it makes it easy for end customers to build on it. Yeah, that's the pull. Any other questions? Well, if you have no questions, then we have t-shirts in the back of the room. As you are walking out, please feel free to collect t-shirts, stickers, do sign up for the meetup uh, that we are doing on uh, May 15th in Portland and uh, talk to us. We would love to hear your customer use cases. Uh, keep us on the foot. Thank you so much.